<laughs> Get in. We're not even yeah. got that on, are we? <laughs> <laughs> you lost your bet, Marcus. Fed up of potting balls like this straight into the bottom. Fed up. I want to start doing trick shots. You don't want to just do a straight pot. Boring man. Proper boring. Right. Let's see if I can do this. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I'm joined by royalty in Sheffield, the Steel City. Mr. Glyn Rhodes, MBE, joined me today. And I'd be in his gym and made me a cuppa. How are you doing, Glyn? <laughs> all right, Russ, nice how see you, pal, you're looking well. <laughs> good, good, good you're looking well in your new Danny Sobson uh, Jack hoodies. Well, rocking. Nice, okay, listen, you know me. Hey, um, nice, they're aren't they? Alright. They want cheap as well, that was invoice for them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Really nice. dear. Yeah, so. well. Better than them other ones, yeah. yeah. Better than other ones. Could do some new trainers, look at yeah. the trainers. What size, Glenn? Uh, anything, if they're free, anything from a size 6. <laughs> 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 50 free. Are they, uh, <laughs> is that an int? If there's nothing yeah. about no, it, it's got any free. <laughs> any trainers they want to give away? Yeah. Right, anyway. we'll get you some. Um, How have you been keeping going? Everything's good. We have had a, we've been really, really busy. Um, we went Saturday, uh, I just mentioned this, it's nothing about anything, but went to an evening with Mickey Ward. How did that Sheffield. go? Sheffield, absolutely brilliant. He's, uh, the, he's one a, only, the one and only Mickey Ward from Boston. The Irish Mickey Ward from Boston. Um, Mark Wahlberg played him, didn't that's he? That's it, they were talking about meeting him, like it's his best mate. He said, I'm meeting Mark Wahlberg on Monday. But he was a great kid, uh, had some hard fights. Obviously, the three fights against Gatti were the ones that we all remember, and they were hard. But what I like about him is a fighter's fighter. Yeah. He's not flashy. He's not bright. You know, I sat aside him, and he, you know, pretty humble guy, um, lovely kid, knows his boxing as well. Uh, telling me about his done his neck in, and then you think, well, you know, having fights like that against Gatti, three of them. Uh, it's going to take its toll on you. The other guy, a man, um, Gustus, Boxer, uh, Manuel Gustus, Shane here, uh, boxing yeah. good fires. They brought him over here to get beat up against yeah. Shane here, didn't they? I think they brought here as a sacrificial lamb. 
Mm. And uh, he turned tables, didn't he? Yeah. And, uh, WBU title. WBU. Yeah, yeah. we're on undercard to Naz. I can't remember who Naz box top of the bill. Uh, right, you done Shane here with body shot. But I think you were losing up to Lenny, you know. Yeah, you well, were, yeah. And you know, he's, fa he's famous for tap to the head, bang to the body, innit? He, um, yeah. Uh, I mean, most a lot of fighters have done that shot, but he's the most famous fighter for doing it. That so left up tap, and it's like head, a throwaway bang. punch. Yeah. Really, yeah. yeah. Taps to head and banks to body. Like Frotch Groves, that were a tap, wasn't it? And the front yeah. point. And then the big right come over, didn't it? What he said, he spent hours and hours and hours in the mirror practicing it, practicing it, practicing it. Yeah. It was good for it's the kids. It's as same arm though, isn't it? It's like a le yeah. left hook. Yeah. Left hook to head, big yeah. left hook to body. Yeah. But he said to all kids in gym, he practiced it for hours and but hours. Did you come and up hours. here, like, No. It? No, you were like kids down. from. We had three tables from gym. Uh, all young kids were there. And it was good for people like, you know, young kids and our young pros. To listen to him, he said something like along the lines that uh, four years before he got the million dollar fight against Gatte, he got a box of six six hundred dollars. And then four four years or four fights later, they're on a million dollars. So he said to the kids, just stick at it, because you never know what's around the corner in this game. And it's right, you don't, do you? You know, the phone can ring, anything can happen. So. You mean good. tick over, keep ticking over. Yeah, keep ticking, keep yeah. in the gym. You know, you know, you have good days, bad days. Bad results, good results, but you got to get back in gym. And, uh, and it, it was good, I enjoyed listening to him. Um, he spoke about um, the Toro Gatte. He didn't actually think that he hung himself. He says, a guy like that, he says, uh, he can't, I can't believe that he ever did that. Um, so there's a lot of unfinished business there. You know, some people say it was his wife. Uh, some people say he were on drugs, but unfinished business. So it was a really good night, we enjoyed it. Signed autographs, had pictures, took with everybody. And just one of the nice guys. Some of these superstars sometimes, they come over here. I'm not naming no names, but yeah, you know, we know, don't we, they don't right? want to sign autographs, they don't want pictures. They don't, he just spent all night signing autographs and pictures. And he, a good kid, a good 100% a, a pro. What does he think about the Arturo Gatti's murder? What does he think? He think he don't believe that Gatti hung himself. He says, they got on, didn't they? Then? Yeah, he yeah. said. Did he trained him after. Yeah, he? he actually trained him for a, his last three fights or something. They were in his corner. Um, they, they, he, this is what he did. He said we became really close. He said I stayed at his house. He stayed at my house. We became really, really close. And he says, in his opinion, there's no way Gatti did that. So. That leaves a lot to be explained. What a wild kid though outside of yeah. boxing. Oh, yeah. Boxing, I've read the podcast, um, Tris Dixon did a podcast and I've, I've heard uh, his manager and he said he ended up being like rock and roll. He said, uh, you know, when he were in the gym, he were like a rock star. He were, used to party hard and drink and what, drugs, whatever. Um, but Mickey Ward says there's no way he hung himself. So when he turned up for his camp though, he, he always knuckled down, didn't he, in camp, didn't he? Got I don't to. know, I, I don't know that much about him, other mm. than the, That's right. the three the three fights against Gatte. I don't know much, you know, he boxed me where the, you know, but other than the three fights with uh, Mickey Ward, I don't know much about Toro Gatte, to tell you the truth. Mm. I, I must admit, I did see him training, uh, I went to New Jersey with Paul Jones, and I seen him training, and he's got a brother called Joe Gatte. Yeah. who obviously weren't as good as him. He came down from Canada um, and I don't really know much about him. But like I said, other than the three fights with Mickey Ward, I'm not, a big, I'm not saying I'm not a big fan of his, but I've not, I've got, I've got, you know, I've not done much research on him or uh, I don't know much about him. Well, we're, who were there on the night then? Who turned up from round here? All, all the, the usual all boxes faces. from our... Oh, Ingalls yeah, and all no, there, no, there were a lot of boxes. Paul Owen from Parsons Cross, Kevin Bailey, Barry Bailey. There were a lot of people, a lot of boxing people there. Uh, John Westcalf were there, Natalie and Scott's missus were there. Uh, all, Scott yeah, there. Scott here. All our guys were there. Um, who else were there? Um, oh, off the top of me, I can't remember. There were a lot of boxing people there, so good. Yeah. It, it was good to be in a, a room full of boxing people. There were about 150 people there. It was good to be in a room full of boxing people. He sat on the stage and he did an interview for about an hour. Talked about everything, how he got started. Yeah. Um, he even said between the, the Toro Gatti fights, one of the fights, he went back tarmacking. Not because he needed the money, but yeah. he needed something to do. I always say that about fires. When you get up in the morning, you've got to have something to do. Uh, and I think what a lot, what a lot of fires do is they've got nothing to do when they get up after a fight. But like I said, he went back 
tarmac in our paving just for something to do, not because he needed the money. And I thought, you know what, take me out of to him for doing something like that because we all know what a lot of fighters do after the fight, what did they do? Pub. Pub, get a big belly on. Yeah, so. And what did he do after he fought Gatti then, free fight? Did he go back to tarmac? No, uh, he just said between he's one of the paid, fights, he? Well, yeah, he got well paid. Yeah, he got well paid. The first one he didn't. The, the, the second two he got. I think he got a million. I think that was his first million. Yeah. The second um, one were a million. The third one. Were it? Wasn't it yeah. I know, he's, he spoke about that. I bet after stoppages then, but I, I bet he hadn't cleared a million sterling. You know, in our money. I think he's made more money from the movie than he probably made from his boxing career. Yeah, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, Mark, Mark Wahlberg made sure he got looked after. He with spoke the movie, about Mark Wahlberg very highly. Yeah, highly. And he said, he said, I'm meeting him. He's, while he's in England, apparently. Mark Wahlberg's in England, I think or Scotland, and they're meeting up and he says he's become very close to him. He says he's become very close to him. Uh, he spoke about his brother in the movie, Dickie Eklund, who yeah. boxed Ray Leonard. He jumped out of the second floor. Yeah, roof, that, yeah. And he said he said he complained, Dickie, and said that weren't true. He says it was the third floor. <laughs> so he sounds alright, loose cannon. Yeah. Uh, but again, he went down the wrong road, didn't he? Uh, he's sort of his son out though now, hasn't he? I don't know, he never he never highlighted anything about that, but he's sad. Well, he, he'll play him in film, he will play Batman. Christian Bale, Christian, Christian Bale, yeah. Bale, so do some right superstars, weren't he, in that film. And it was a good yeah. film, it was a good film. And like I said, loved talking to him, spent all night talking to him. Um, and, he, what, and what a good guy, really enjoyed speaking to him. Yeah. I'm a massive, massive Ward fan, me, like Mickey Ward. I mean, he won that first one with Gatti, didn't he? What, I am. Like round nine. Round nine. You, you know, even when you watch it now, you watch it and he still wins. When he dropped. That'd have been stopped in England, wouldn't it? Well, when he'd done it with a body shot and he stepped back. You know, I, I, I like body punches. You know, yeah. we always have a saying here, it's not my saying, kill the body and the head dies. Yeah. When Gatti got done with that body shot, you could see the pain on his face. Yeah. He took a step back, he went down. Sucked it up and he come back, didn't it? And that's what you got to do. And you know what? If he'd have, if he'd have not swallowed it, but if he'd have got beat on that, everybody mm. said, you know what? Well done. But he didn't. He beat down on his gum shield and he come back, got the heart on it, and that's what. Fight he was three week in bed after that, wasn't he? Making order. I'd got to. They were in bed now. I, I can imagine. Week. So. He was in hospital, wasn't he? Yeah. He that. told the story about. It. He says he was in hospital, laid in the bed, and uh, the surgeon pulled the curtain back. Said, I've got somebody here. Uh, we might want to see pull the curtain back and get his lady in the next bed. He says, and he says, they became friends. He says, because as soon as the curtain went back, he says, the first thing that Gatti said to him is, Are you all right, Mickey? He says, and that shows you something about the kid that, you know. Uh, he says, and after that, we became very, very good friends. So it was good, had a good night, really enjoyed it, and uh, it was one of the better nights that I've been to. Because we've all been to nights where these celebrities, Superstars. yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, we'll not name none. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, yeah, so we had a good night, we had a good Saturday night. Oh, that's brilliant. Uh, Dennis has put in Ricky Hatton on. Is it? Where's no, that? Well, that's a work so, is it Matt works Lock. up? Matlock, Matlock, yeah. Some sort of football team. Matlock Football Club, isn't Matlock it? Matlock Town, yeah. Dennis is president there, isn't he? Right, yeah. So 4th so, of December. Oh, that'll be alright, won't it? Yeah. yeah that'll be good. I've seen, we did Ricky Hatton uh, probably for before he even become British champion, just round corner. It was a good night, Ricky, isn't it? Yeah, he's, he's got better, and he's, he's yeah, got yeah. Just round corner. Sings and tells jokes. Listen, he's, he's had a lot of practice, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he delivers his stuff well, doesn't he? It comes across yeah, well, yeah, and yeah. he's got some stories to tell. He's had a lot of practice. Um, so a good one, you know, so he. Ricky's, Ricky can tell a story, can't Rick, he? Dennis were doing evenings with Ricky Hatton 15 years ago, that one in Vegas. You know, before anybody did Yeah, them. yeah. You know, well, he, he started, he got it because he built him a fan base up, didn't he? In America. What about that band? Yeah, he had him band, Dennis had that band from Hillsborough, didn't he? Going Clinton around. started all that, didn't he? Yeah. Clinton started that Wednesday football thing, they all followed Clinton yeah, and all of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was good. I, yeah. enjoyed, I enjoyed it, it was good that, but Ricky, Ricky's got some good stories to tell. Oh, yeah, I don't yeah. think there's any fighter took as many fans to America as, as many as Ricky No, no, Joshua didn't take many, did he? No, I mean, I can't think of anybody else who's ever took that many fans to uh, to America. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know if he's right, I heard over 30,000. Uh, does that sound right to you? No. Oh, uh, Joshua? No, Ricky. Ricky yeah, 30 or 1,000, yeah, yeah, yeah Dennis right, said, yeah. Uh, them are, is it... McLaren Airport, Airport from Vegas, yeah. what's it called? Yeah. McLaren Airport. Is that what McCarran. it's called? McLaren or something. Oh, yeah. The people there told Dennis how many Brits had gone in for that weekend. Yeah. That's not bad, there's not many British no. fighters ever done no. that. I don't think that it held that many though, did it? 
But won't they watching it all on oh, stream? Yeah, if you can't get into the... Don't uh, you pay to go into casinos? Yeah. Uh, we've been a few times and not been able to get in, so you're watching another casino, yeah. you put big screens on, it's, it's good. You're there though, aren't you? It's an yeah, you get it, isn't it? The thing about going to Vegas for me, what I like about it is the atmosphere, the week the week up to it, you know, if, if there's a big fight, all the eye rollers come in, you know, boxes. All Brits going, out there. It, it's great. Not necessarily just a Brits. We went to the Tyson Fury fight, mm. um, and it was brilliant. The week up to it, it was absolutely brilliant. We got tickets to the fight. John Rawlings, who um, I've known for years, John got some tickets, so we took the kids. And then as we were coming out, we, we, on the Sunday, uh, we were all sat in the airport, laid around, just with somebody shouts, Tyson's here. Tyson walked in the airport. Fury. Fury, yeah, spent time talking to our kids. We all had his pictures. We, we, we chatted to him. His, his cut had looked like he had a right good job done on it. The night yeah, yeah. before, and uh, like I say, he boxed the night before, but he spent time talking to people. So you know, I take me have to have to do him for things like that because I bet, I bet he was so tired. I bet all he wanted to do was get on the plane and come home. But he still spent time. He sleeps on planes, doesn't he, Tyson? But you can't your first class, can't you? Yeah. Oh yeah. On like cousin cattle class, sat Yeah. Cattle. <laughs> Although our seats weren't bad actually, so uh, it was good of him to spend time while we were in the airport waiting to take off. It was good of him to uh, spend time talking to all our kids. So, yeah. Yeah, we had a good trip. Enjoyed it. What did you think about the boxing at the weekend? Do you know what? I've not seen it, and I'll tell you why. Because we were at the Mickey Ward night. I recorded yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, I know all the results. I've heard all the stories. Apparently, we were very good, weren't it? Hey, look, the match room show, I thought we were good. Yeah. yeah I'll tell you the like said, We were at Saturday night, so I recorded it. Uh, and Sunday, I, I went to a boxing show Sunday, so I just not had time to sit down and watch it. Um, so I'll get around to it. But apparently, from what I've heard, it was a very, very good. Good, good fight, show, yeah. Yeah. Uh, David Price uh, got knocked out. I don't know what David's going to do now. Is, is he continuing or is he yeah, just continuing? Is it? Is it? Apparently, uh, Eddie Earn owes him a fight because he saved the show. Right. Well, well they said that about the Povetkin fight when he stepped in. Right. And he gave him Little, Cash, Ali, Alan, and then obviously yeah. Chisora. Well, well, it's the same old story, isn't it? Oh, I felt flat on night. When you're stepping up to Euro level from his level he's at now, I don't think he's ever reached the potential that he were expected to reach, were they? Because he's a great yeah. amateur, weren't he? Good amateur fighter. But, well, you, yeah. well, how old is he now? He's got to be 34. 36. Is it? Is it? Like that, 35, well, 36. He's had a few good paydays, hasn't he? Well, Does yeah. he need the money? I don't know. Like, uh, anyway. He's earned good money. But this is how I look at it, right, at the moment. Dave Allen's re refused 200 to 250. I'm assuming that's tickets on yeah. top. To yeah. fight Dubai, he's asked for 300 to 350. Right. And he's not won a belt yet, but good luck to him if you can get that. David Price, I think, I think Warren will put him in with Dubai now. Right. Because Dubai needs a dance partner, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. David Price will want to ring as much as he can out of it now, because he? he's still a name, isn't he? Olympic he is. bronze. Or... He is, but I don't know. I don't... Well, whoever promoter puts him on a show, then I think the, the, dan the dice in me. I, like I said, if he's made enough money, um, I'd like to see him finish. Mm. But it's again, fighters never know when to finish, do they? No. You know what's that saying? It's the first. You fighters are the first to know it's over, and the last. the last to admit it. Aren't yeah, it? yeah, you know, yeah. What, what do the fighters do if they don't box? Well, I think what, what you mean there is what I read Carl Zaggy's book, No Ordinary yeah. Joe, and he yeah. said he knew. When they were going for them runs for their that last, they were over. them last couple of yeah. fights, yeah. you know Jones and Hopkins, yeah. he said he knew when they were going for them runs that they weren't there. that he were cutting, you yeah. know, it were cutting well, corners. Well, Mickey Ward said that Saturday night. He said he knew going into the last fight against Gatti, he were finished. He said yeah. he were retiring anyway. He said win, lose or draw, he said we're retiring anyway. You just know it's over, don't you? And how do you get up for them fights? You know, after you've been, after you've been at the top of the game, mm. how do you get? I heard Naz say it once, yeah, I heard other people say it, it's hard to get up and do your road work when you go to bed in some pyjamas, yeah. which it must be, if you've got a lot of money in the bank, and that's why you've got to think about what Mayweather does, he still trains, doesn't he? Still trains, yeah, Look at what he's got, it, so, oh, he's loaded, yeah. he? but again, what, he, what, what the fighters do if they don't train, mm. you know, most, most people who boxed, They've not got a, they've not got a skill. They don't, they're not, they've not been to work. They don't go to work. They, 
So when his, the careers are over, what do they do? I'd like, I said this the week, I'd like to see more fighters getting back into boxing as trainers, mm. as, as I don't know, managers, getting back in, involved in the game. Because mm. uh, there's not enough boxing people involved in the game. Yeah, is that? No. Whether it's amateurs or pro, I just like to see a lot of fighters getting back involved in the game. Yeah, I would. But, I would. But I'd like to see some ex fighters uh, be referees and be yeah. judges. Yeah, well, there is a few in there. Uh, Bob Williams. Yeah. Um, Terry, Terry O'Connor. Terry O'Connor. Um, Michael from Doncaster, which called Michael Alexander. Michael Alexander. Uh, who else is there? I don't know. I'm on about your top top guys. Yeah. You know, like Robin Reed and that. Robin does yeah. that uh, bare, bare knuckle, BF, bare knuckle yeah. refereeing. Yeah. Doesn't Why is he not being involved in boxing? I don't know. He just says that you don't. I think it's a little bit political in it, and it's a lot of messing about it. Who wants to deal with a, a board and a control that are all they like? They're all stuck in the ways, aren't they? Yeah, but you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's an hard one, isn't it? It's a hard one. I, anyway, either way, listen. I'd like more fighters to get involved in boxing. Um, you know, but sometimes it's a bit embarrassing for some fighters. You see them; they have to go on courses. You know. Um, you know, like all our guys here, we've got some ex-pros here and they've had to go on the amateur course, which I understand that, but sometimes you just think to yourself, look, if you've spent a long time in the game and, you know, you, you can train a fire, just because you've got a certificate to say that you can train a fire, don't mean you can train a fire. No, no. I went on the amateur course when I retired 20 odd years ago. I went on the amateur course and there were people on that course back then that I won't let them train my dog. Yeah. I won't let them train a dog. But, you know, they go on the course to get the badge, to get a certificate, and they're allowed to train fighters then, but that doesn't mean they're a good trainer, does it? No, I see, I see people who've been refused to go on the course, yeah. and they know more. See, it's, it's a bit tricky, isn't it? But, like you just said, it's like people who drive cars, they pass the test, don't we say they can drive a exactly, car, Exactly, exactly. If I had to pass my test again, I'm sure I don't think I'd pass you're my test. You're all over the road, you, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> you've got a sports car as well and you're all over. I, I, like I so you get what happens is you get into bad habits and trainers and boxers are only the same. Yeah. So just like when you're driving your car you get into a bad habit, mm. boxers can be boxers, trainers can be exactly the same. That's a good so, point though what you've just said it, there. It is. Very you know, good point. Good, keep doing the same thing over and over. I don't mean it's right, does it? Mm, you no. know, boxers doing the same thing over and over, but every now and again you need to mm. stop, regroup and go back to mm. what you know, go back to the thing that got you there in the first place. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd like to see more fighters getting involved in the game. Right, your gym that you've got at the moment, uh, who are the professionals we've got in this gym? And who's going who's gonna to do good? How many professionals we've got well, in this gym now? Well, obviously the main man we've got here at the moment is Tommy Frank. Tommy Frank. I, I love Tommy Frank to be, it's because he's come through that um, period of time you know, behind your Sam Sheedies and all them other pros that we've had. It'd be like Liverpool's uh, old boot room, innit? Yeah. And so what Tommy's done, and Keane and Kay, I've got a young kid out of there, saying, what I'm hoping they're doing is taking all the good points, which Tommy is, he's taking all the good points of all the other guys he's seen, yeah. you know, your few kids and your, your Sam Sheedies and your Carl Wiles and everything, and taking all the good points and learning. And he is, he's last, like I say, Last week you're in the gym every day, every right. day, yeah. Whether we're training hard or you just came to the gym. So I use Tommy as a good example to all the other kids. Look, if he's in, and he ran Saturday morning, we all meet Saturday morning and run around the dam. So if he can do it, everybody can do it, can't they? Yeah. And then you have the other kids who will come in tonight and you know, every boxing gym is similar to this. They've all got excuses. They've all got, I said to him, where were you Saturday morning? Or where were? They all come out with these excuses. But, you know, we can all make excuses to why we can't do this or why we can't do that. No names, but one of the guys, who's one of our top guys out there, made an excuse as to why he couldn't train. And I'm thinking, I've heard it all before. I used to use all them excuses myself to Brendan. Mm -hmm. I used to tell Brendan the same thing and Brendan must have thought, what a mug. Uh, you know, yeah Brendan, I've been running. Yeah Brendan, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Brendan must have known I was lying. And so now when they're making the excuses to me, you know, I just say, I've heard it all before, and that's one of Brendan's favourite sayings, that what? I've heard it all before. And I find myself now saying the same thing. So as they walk in giving me excuses, I go, i heard it all before. That, that kid who's just come late earlier. Uh, which one, the tall one? No, that, no, the other no, one, the short one. No, I'm one of that, the very, very tall oh, one. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Come well, on. Well, he's supposed to be the next big star out here, isn't he? Exactly. Is he slipping into bad habits, Glyn? Uh, I wouldn't say bad habits, but every now and again you have to pull him in, don't you? And say, look, so you so far. You know, there's another kid out here. He's real deal, isn't he? Yeah, right? I think there's another kid out there who's having it when I go out there. Um, oh, you know, no, he, he's yeah. going to get it as well. Every now and again you have to. They're only babbies, though, aren't they? They are, but you need to pull them in and say, look, so you so far. Whatever, whatever. Um, sometimes they think that I'm the friend. Like I said, Saturday night, we're all at Mickey Ward night, we had a great night. And you, they're all messing about and having a laugh and everything. And so then, Monday, like now, I have to stop being the friend and I have to be the trainer and the manager. Yeah, and I have yeah. to say, right, done, get back on it. So, mm. um, Reason Kane's not here tonight, he's unbeaten in four, he's having his uh, brain scan. We'll put the claim on. Kane Salvin. Salvin, yeah. So he's on the next show, Dennis. Is that show. for his license? Just for his yearly, his, his, yearly his, medical. Yeah, yeah yearly yeah. medical. Um, Keenan and Wayne Wright's on. Keenan's on. Who's actually on the bill? Is the bill oh. confirmed? Never look at that. I don't know who's on. Uh, none of the opponents are sorted yet. Nothing's confirmed. There's still four I've only got three guys, guys on. Yeah, uh, yeah. four You've weeks. You've got three on, haven't you? Yeah, three. Tommy, Kane, Keenan, yeah. yeah. Who else is Tyrone on? Nurse, Tyrone. Cash Alley, Josh Whale, yeah. that's Ooh, six, Sufjan. Suf has uh, anybody got any opponents yet? No, no, no. no, 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 no. Yeah. Um, so, hey, there is a couple, but I'm not going to say on yeah, there because yeah, you know what was on behind the scenes, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Rats, aren't they? A lot of them in yeah, background. Yeah, should be alright, shouldn't it? Yeah, it is. is, he, there's, is a, he, there's a corker, a couple of corkers is there? coming on. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. good. Has, uh, is he going to be on that uh, free view again? Who? The show is it? Yeah, free sport. Free yeah. sport, sorry. Yeah, free sport. That's yeah. good. That's nice, that, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah. It, you know, it has a good advantage and a bad advantage. It's great on the night, mm. but you know, people who you're hoping buy tickets. They want to watch it at home in front of the telly. Yes. Or a chink at a Chinese exactly, story. Exactly, exactly. Like you know, stay at home and, and that affects kids' ticket sales, doesn't it? Yeah. And we all know now about how boxing works, got to sell tickets. It's, uh, I don't when that started, do you? When I was boxing, Brendan just used to say to me, you're boxing, you're getting X amount, this is what you got to pay out, that's it. Mm. it. It's what's wrong with boxing now, isn't it? Ticket tickets, deals. Ticket deals, it is. It's what's, what they're all doing, it all yeah, promoters do it, don't they? You could be the best boxer in the world, if you don't sell a ticket, nobody's going to put you on. No, and you could be the worst boxer in the world, and if you sell tickets, get you know, and you just keep yeah. getting chance after chance after or if you do good numbers on IFL yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> and that's that's with the way the boxing is going mm. ticket sales bums on seats so yeah. I don't know whatever happened to skill skill factor and the promoters getting behind the skillful fighter well you, again it's I understand it because I promoted mm. so I understand how it works you know it's no good putting guys on your shows if they don't sell tickets no no matter how skillful they are or how good they are, for a small time promoter like me, if, if these guys can't sell tickets, where do you get the money from? You know, yeah. You've got to get the money from somewhere. I remember putting shows on when I had, when I was promoting and I had big ticket sellers like Fuke, Billy Boyle, people like that on. That were alright because it carried the show. So you've got guys who didn't sell so many tickets, but it were alright because Fuke and Boyle didn't sell hundreds, so that were alright. But what happens if you've not got a big ticket seller on your top of the bill to carry the rest of the show? Yeah. You know, the money's got to come from somewhere, hasn't it? Yeah. So it's a tricky one. Yeah, uh, it is. And it's getting harder. It's getting a lot harder, you know. Mm. There's a lot of things now where, you know, when I was a kid, you either boxed, played football, or now you've got so many other things where Internet. people look at, yeah, people that play basketball and unlicensed boxing and. There's so many other things where people can, you know, diversify into yeah, other sports. Yes, yeah, yeah. Because boxing's hard. Yeah. I'm like that when I when I'm uh, sat at home at night and I'll go on to YouTube and I go on with a point and looking at something, but then I end up looking at other something stuff. Else. You go down other avenues, don't you? Listen. Then it's two a.m. and three a.m. And you think you better go to bed. That's the worst thing I can do that at night when I yeah, go on that YouTube. You lose yourself in it, don't you? <laughs> hey, you get on there. Uh, I love these calls. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, I yeah, you. Um, it's hard because, like I say, I get on that YouTube and because I'm a boxing fan, mm. and then you watch one fight. You'll be looking at Ali, won't you? Oh, no, I'm at Ali. Listen, hey. Anyway, listen. Have I seen you since come back from Deer Lake? Yeah, you've seen me. Oh, yeah, tell no, me no, about no. what happened, though. I know. Tell me. We again, uh, we went to New York. 
uh, four of us, me, Tommy, Pete, Joseph, my son, we went to New York and somewhere where I've always wanted to go because I'm an Al Ali fan. Deer Lake is... How did you get there from New York? We drove. We hired a car. We hired a car. What, you're driving yeah, around exactly. New York? Me. Me. <laughs> I'm the worst driver What, a nightmare? Funnily enough, going wasn't too bad. But if anybody's ever drove a car in Times Square, they'll know what. My first right turn, I nearly killed somebody. Twin roads in Times yeah, Square? Yeah, Times Square. So oh my God. The truck that we borrowed, it was one of these big bus things. They upgraded us. So... You know, did you bump it? No, 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 I never did. Thank God. Um, and it's a wonder because on the way back the rain was torrential. It was unbelievable. So we we had this car, drove to a place called Deer Lake, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh, we drove past the little road where you go up and uh, drove past, came back. We thought you can't go up that road. It's not anyway. Up this up this road. We drove up. And as you approach it, it says Mount Ali Training Camp. You know, yeah, yeah. unbelievable. And, we pulled up. Butterflies oh God, yeah. Like you would have oh, you went to a funeral, didn't you? Well, you went to a funeral. Uh, so we got there, um, and it was unbelievable. And to think that you're walking around the place where Muhammad Ali, I think he, I think he got it in 1971. He trained all his fights there, and then on the pictures you can see a young Larry Holmes in the yeah. kitchen. Um, you know, he only opens on the weekends, but this guy met us, shown us around. Um, you know. And he was brilliant. He spent time showing us, talking. He was, he, he was good um, because he didn't have to do that. You know, four guys come from England, opened on a Saturday and Sunday, but he showed us around, spent time talking to us. We, he left us to his own devices. He says, "Go and have a look around." And it was nice to think that you know you're walking in the footsteps of greatness. You know, this is where Mo Dalitre went in his cabin. There was a big bell where they used to ring it, and everybody, everybody used to meet um, to do road work. We've got an hill in Sheffield where we run up and we Get in. <laughs> God, am I potting well tonight. I am potting well tonight. Foggy, I owe you 50 quid, I've had one beer. Bulmers. And at four quid they can keep it. See if I can do this shot here. I'm trying to get this sport Billy sportsmanship. Oh, ho, ho. Touché, way! Come on, Foggy, set him up. Set him up, Fog. Set him up. Let me get the rest of your jar now off you, Foggy. Get him set up. Dead man's ill because you get to the top of the, he's, the room where Mount Ali used to run is called Agony Hill. Oh, um, yeah, is it, is it about five, six mile yeah, in yeah. somewhere? So, you know, take all your, isn't it high altitude? No, it's not high altitude, but it's, but it's, but it's, it's, a, it's a, steep, it's a, it's a steep like, hill. Yeah. And when you think about, you know, a lot of fighters these days, we never training camp, they have them in fabulous places and hotels and resorts. What is rough there? This Did you do it in pit boots as well? Running pit boots. When he first moved in, they had no water, no electric. And, we, and did you still did the camp? Still did the camp. And how did they get washed in that? Pump, got a big pump. Uh, pump and how did water they, were it cold water as well? I presume so. It were only obviously as, as, as it evolved, they got electric and uh, they never even had a television. 
a big communal kitchen, uh, and, and you think to yourself, this is Mohamed Ali we're talking about here, who, who could well, have had... the biggest starting who, sport, wasn't it? Who could have had a, a, a luxurious training camp. That's who, why he was so good. But exactly, he never forgot. Listen, that's where he trained, up that hill. Pit bulls running in the morning, log cabins, no TVs. They only had one TV, and that were in the canteen, I think. Um, but then you, you hear about these stories of other people coming to this camp. The Jackson 5 came there, Tom Jones, uh, Diana Ross. Diana Ross. Allegedly, Elvis Presley. David uh, Frost. David Frost interviewed. They were, they were a big, famous. You person, can watch these they? videos where type in Mohamed Ali daily training camp. I can watch so them all day. Oh, Ali, stuff I about Ali. I could. I could. Listen, I could sit in front. Of he's the greatest ever boxer, isn't he? You can't. You can't try and tell me there's anybody greater than Ali. Sixteen wins uh, of a world so champion. So, uh, in an era when some of them guys that he boxed, you know, your 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 Ron Lyles and your Ernie Shavers and them type of people. They'd have been never won world titles, they'd didn't have they? been champions these days. Oh, you know what I mean? mean you're, you're talking like win, 16 wins over world champions, but you could add probably another 20 to that. Some of them that'd guys be world champions nowadays, today. heavyweight champions. Well, you'd be yeah. like your. Ernie Shavers are a lot of these today in Ron Lyle, aren't they? Uh, I spoke to Kenny Rainford, I don't know if you know Kenny Rainford, yeah. he's hoping to bring Ernie Shavers oh, over. That'll be good, uh, isn't it? Yeah, and he's one of the. He's one of the Old breed from that era, the mm. 80s. Right? He'll put a few dips yeah. in your big punch bag over there in corner, Glen Wall. Hardest punching uh, ever. Generally regarded as the hardest puncher ever. ever. Well, I think it's him, Julian Jackson, um, and some. That'd some be a good show, that. Yeah, any shows, good, any shows, shows. It? And they can tell a few stories. You know, yeah. you put Larry Holmes on the floor, didn't it? Box yeah. Harley, box some good fires. So that era of the heavyweights, you know, you can know, as you know, he, he, for me, that were the best. Seventies. Brilliant. That's years. why I call Dennis Ron Lyle, yeah. isn't it? Because he always goes on about Ron Lyle Foreman, doesn't it? But he's never seen. Each other, have you ever seen the Ron Lyle George Foreman fight? Yeah. They were up and down. I don't know how many times they were up and down. Knocked each other down. Got up. Knocked, knocked each seven each bells around each other, didn't they? The but they were massive fires. punchers. And they were only fifteen fires. stone, weren't they? Yeah, but great fighters were. Yeah. Oh, Ron Lyle yeah. were a great fighter. Well, tell you another fight. Yeah, I'll tell you another fight that when we went to Vegas I bumped into a guy called Leroy, Leroy Caldwell. Leroy. He boxed George Foreman, Oscar Bonavina, Ernie Shavers, sparred with Sonny Liston. Mm. He told us the story about Sonny Liston. He said, uh, what happened with Liston? He knew too much. So I said, apparently. About the mob and that? Yeah. He said, so they had to get rid of him. I went, what do you mean they had to get rid of him? Dug him up with Brown, didn't well, they? He said, he said, he used to drink that much in Las Vegas and start shooting his mouth off. He said, so he had to go. I says, go away. He says, he had to go. Is this a story you heard in Vegas? This is what he told us, Leroy Colwell. He's bringing his own book out and he says, you know, this is, he says, yeah, he says everybody knew that. So well, the whole boxing community in Vegas know that story, do you think? Yeah, yeah he just said it as though he were like, he says, oh yeah, he knew too much, he had to go. And I went, um, so, you know, whether it's true or not. Apparently, uh, Sonny Liston were frying the needles, but, the story goes that he took an overdose. Uh, oh, yeah, for the needles. Yeah, you don't know, do you? So, no. But then Leroy Colwell said, you know, he, he had to go. He said he knew too much, so he had to go. So Jeez. you just think that's dangerous. Had him in an hotel, didn't he? Yeah, or sad, didn't it? Sad. But again, story of boxing. You, you know, know, you know, it's funny, isn't it, right? Uh, I don't know if you've seen on, on my Twitter. I don't put many tweets out now because. You don't know who you're, who you're interacting with, do you, Glenn? Well, I don't do Twitter very much. I, I, I do it through Facebook, yeah. which automatically goes on, but... If I know somebody, I'll DM them, but... Yeah. I, we use it, or, or mainly, or Nicola does, to put the videos out. Right, yeah. But, I put a tweet out the other day because, obviously, I've, I've been in touch with Luda Bella and he, he had Taylor, didn't he, from day yeah. one, Jermaine yeah. Taylor. Yeah. And he's not doing so good, Jermaine Taylor, at the moment. No, and... He, he were like bronze medal Olympics, he had all four belts, didn't he? And he came back and he, he got beat by Froch halfway, yeah. but I mean, knocked him out, didn't he? But he actually, his last fight, he won the IBF middleweight title oh. back, didn't he? Has he 2014. Got, he got nothing. No. He's on Skiddy Row. Oh, that's terrible. Man. He got like 20 odd million dollars for he, the two public fights. This is the He's thing that nothing. upsets me about boxing. I well, was fighting. Where's all his money gone? Who's had it all off him? And what history, do they do? History just keeps repeating itself. You see these guys become champion and all these people latch on. As soon as the money's gone, I don't, I don't know. People listen. I don't know. Would you imagine them doing that with Carl Fox and not get a penny? 
But this is the story of boxing. You've got to be it? tough with it, haven't you? You've got to be tough with them. People need boxers. Need Do you think it's boxing. an African American that culture that? I mean, Tommy Hearns, You've heard the Tommy yeah, Hearns one, haven't you? You know, he's, he's got, got nothing, nothing but. It? He said he felt that, I know this because Tommy Hearns told somebody Dennis knows, Tommy Hearns felt that he had to give them because he come from poverty like them. Oh, he had the same problem, didn't he, the first so time around, didn't on. he? So many angers on. Yeah, and it's sad. wrong, isn't it? And he's boxing the same today. You can name him now. Oh, I, we know, I know We him. know we'll come to the shows in dressing rooms, don't we? Exactly. We can't move, can we? Angelo Dundee said, I'd seen a post on Facebook the other day and he said uh, something like, See who's in the dressing rooms when you lose. See who's in the locker room when you lose. And yeah. You know, it's a story of boxing, isn't it? You know what, right? I'm going to tell you a story, right? Um, this this gentleman, you know this gentleman, he trained somebody who we know to heavyweight title, right? So that gives you the clue. He said to me in the last seven days, he said, you know what? You, people latch on. Before you know where you are, they're up in your fighter's hands in dressing room. He says, and you're thinking, Where's he come how's from? it got to this? I know, I know. You've got to nip it in the bud. Nip it in the bud. You don't allow away. any of this, dear Glenn. Well, You've got to nip it straight away. Straight away. Listen, straight away. Otherwise, what happens is but nobody. There's no divas in here like Mick Wales, do you mean? They don't have it, do we? Don't have it. You come in here. Listen, I don't have people in here anyway now. I know. Unless I've you're invited in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't do that behind closed doors training. Everybody can come and watch you yeah, train. Yeah. But what happens is people will come in first. Is They'll be helping you out to give your guy a drink, and then they'll say, "Oh, do you want three pull?" And oh. then they empty the spirit bucket, and then before you know it, they're on the training course, or they're wrapping mm. somebody's hands, and you think, "Hang on, I remember this guy when he was emptying the spirit buckets, and now he's he's a trainer." So it, that gets me mad with boxing. Yeah, it I don't know if, I don't know if football or if there's any other sport like it, because I don't know another sport. But that's the one thing in boxing that gets me mad. And then when they broke, when they got no money, guess what? Where's all, them, where's all them people go? They all, they all just said, they, they, they latch they on to the next one. They, they latch on to the next, on to next fire. Yeah, yeah. It's sad, it's terrible. Honestly, I hate boxing. And it, it's, a, it's a massive, massive problem in boxing because... Uh, how can you explain it? Uh, all these so-called experts who get this fight because a, a promoter and a manager and a trainer can't be with a fighter 24 hours a day. When he goes home, they are, the, these people are in this person's ear. Well, if they're experts, why aren't they putting shows well, why on? Why haven't they got a gym? Why haven't they got a gym? Why aren't they, tra they training fighters themselves? Yeah, you know, why aren't they come here? Why aren't they do what I do? Or there's, there's hundreds of people do what I do yeah. seven days a week. Yeah. Come to the gym. You know, you've got no life, then, have you? Well, this is my life. Mm. <laughs> I've spent more time. A few kids, same age as my kids. He's got the same problem now, hasn't he? I, I've spent more time with few kids. Sam Sheedy, Carl Wilde. Uh, Jeff Wilson, Lee Edwards, we're all the same age as my kids. I spend more time with them than I have my own kids. Yeah. But <coughs> listen, my kids understand, listen, it's not going to change. No. Well, yeah. the point I'm trying to make is if anybody's listening and you're taking up boxing, <coughs> keep your friends around you who you had exactly. from day one. Because you'll find out you've got loads of friends once you start making a few quid. And if you don't believe me, do what I do whenever I go into Doncaster Town Centre at Frenchgate and I see somebody who I grew up with at school. Yeah. You always go up and you always say, How are you doing? It's always great to see him. Yeah. But you don't see enough of them people, I think, that nowadays, because we have like people who latch on, don't we? Well, you, obviously I don't, but boxers Listen, do, don't we? Uh, yeah, and we know who they are. We know, we know who they are. We know who, they are, are. We know who you yeah. are, so we're on tears. Yeah, we're on to you. You've been rumbled. <laughs> You've been but I think that's boxing yeah. in jet at my level, at world level. At, listen, it's the just, one with that, ginger that, hair. He said, "Didn't sexy beast." That's a, you've been rumbled. That, that's just how it is boxing. <laughs> that's just boxing yeah, yeah, through yeah. and through, yeah. from here to here. So. Yeah. It's but rotten to the core, but we love it because every now and then, every now and then we get a sheedy Cameron or a Ward Gatti, don't we? Exactly. We and get a great fight. All oh, that Tommy Frank, that last one. And even if you don't, this game, I love this game. I love coming in. Oh, of course you know, we do. Yeah. What, what am I going to do if I don't come in? Get a job. Be snooker, get a it, job. Do what? I yeah. can't do anything. Oh, and so and, you know, and as the older the older you get, the the opportunities get less and less and less. Of course. We're all right, yeah. When you were 20, you know, you're going to do a day out shovel or do... So as you get older and older, what are you going to do? So if I don't come in, what do I do? No, I don't know, yeah. Anyway, I like coming here. Yeah. Right, Tommy Frank. Tommy. His last performance. He's moved yeah. on from that now. 
He's yes. got a lot of experience from that, hasn't he? He's had a lot of stick of it, but he yeah. got the win. He got the win. And there'll yeah. be fights where he'll think, do you know what? He might get robbed down the line and not get the decision all. Exactly. He, he swings and roundabouts, isn't it? He learnt a lot from that. That kid could have been a banana skin. You know, some really. He was a very experienced kid, we were 70 years did. fights, didn't he? Yeah, he had. I, I said to him, he was after what? And he says, oh, from. <laughs> so I kind of like thought to myself, you know what, I feel like I've been, I dropped corner a little bit here because I did my own work on him that I could yeah. that you can only do, you know, your usual, speak to people who know him, look at people, cross check, da, da, da. and it seemed a pretty safe fight, but then it could have been such a bad banana skin for him, couldn't it? But he got the experience got through it. and that, and you know what, that'll stand him in good stead now, stayed. because when he asks a question with himself yeah. around eight or nine exactly. next time, if it's a war, He's been there. he might think, well, I've been here before, it's easy, well, it's in his mem muscle memory, isn't it? One of the things that Dennis said, and I agree with him, and I was there through it, Clinton went through the same thing in his yeah. early career. He had fights where he had to ask himself questions. Crawford Ashley. Crawford Ashley, I think Crawford Ashley broke his nose, or what that happened to See? All the Clemens and that were He had well. to ask himself questions there, which stood him in good stead when he when he actually got to back for world title. When Clinton so, had that life and death with Glenn Johnson when he that one, he asked yeah. himself the question, but he'd been there before. He, he it, knew what it? to do. And you can't buy experience. No, you can't. So the experience can't. Tommy got from that night, listen, he listen, you don't want too many of them. But no. listen, we know about Tommy Frank, he's got, he's got some big coconuts yeah. and he's got a big heart and he's got a good even chin. Even though he looks like some out uh, of uh, Take That. Yeah, even though he looks like a boy band. It's a boy band, you know, yeah. Don't, don't, don't let that He looks like Lee Singer from Brooklyn Beyond, doesn't he? Can, he? <laughs> he can have a fight when it comes down to it. Yeah, so oh, yeah. We yeah. know that now, don't we? Yeah, yeah. They all can, all these are pretty shady car wire. Come on, my guys have fight. Listen, because if you can't, you're in the wrong gym. Yeah. This, Listen, if you can't have a fight in this gym, I'm not. We don't. We don't yeah. say everybody's got to have a fight. But if you can't have a fight, you're in the wrong game, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, it's boxing. Yeah. It's boxing. You know, I used, yeah. I used to spar with Bomber and Brian Anderson, and I used to think, oh god, I can spar with Mick Mills. Mick Mills, all them guys, and he then you get him, puncher, and then you get him with somebody, you know, and you think, what's going on? Why am I? What, I'm sparring with Bomber, but I'm bottom because it's completely different. You've got to have it hard in the gym, and he's when you fight. What I used to do. I'd have it easy in the gym and then hard every time you box and that's yeah. no good so no, again, a bit listen. like Dave Allen you he always seems to be in hard fights doesn't he you know, and I don't I'm not a big I'm not saying hard fights are good but it's nice to know that if you have to if you have to be involved in one you, you can do it yeah. so it's no good finding out uh, when you're in a big fight oh you know what this is not for me so we I train these guys hard so that they didn't realise that when they get in the ring then, listen, it's a tough game. It's the toughest game tough in the world, isn't it? Rock hard game, Hardest isn't it? game. Uh, anyway. Well, listen, it's nice to see you, Glenn. Cheers, I'm glad Russ. you're doing all right. And doing thanks great. for Cooper. No problem. You're looking good. I didn't get one, though. You didn't make you one, did it? Oh, shit, it's having it when I go out of here. Nice <laughs> um, to see you. You're looking well yeah, in that top. good. Thanks. All right, mate. Cheers, cheers Russ. Speak to you later. Well, see you again, and thanks for having me. Anytime. So, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing, it's a fantastic sport. All right, peace out. Please. That's a pretty unorthodox way to pot six balls. It's not the proper way, but if you run out of position all the time, that's what happens. You need a little bit of luck with some of the shots, and uh, you end up having to pull miracle shots off. But in any other game, you just get beat. My dad's mate, Brian, always says to me, 
Il est une histoire de son. Now you just had a double there, that was a triple, but that's what you get when you go for a double. Sometimes it can kick back and the cut the knuckle will, will reverse it back. It's a long but well, 